Elon Musk launched PayPal asking what it would be if sending money was as simple as sending email. I'm going to stand here today and ask you to imagine a world where sending anything is as simple as sending an email. And when you say simple, it's just not fast. It also means equal parts convenient and equal parts reliable. I mean, think about it this way that, you know, what if, think of the negation, what if your email was as unreliable as your deliveries, right? Like imagine the Gmail support Twitter feed. I forwarded that chain mail to 21 people last night. They still haven't gotten it. Is my love life doomed? <laughs> right? So you can have that, right? So now this, now this world looks obviously very good, right? Like, you know, where you can send anything from anywhere, you know, it instantly reaches there. So why doesn't it still happen, right? Like, to understand that, let's understand what's motion and what's the complexity of motion. At the very base of motion is this you know, a uh, thing called a pendulum, which is a simple harmonic motion. I assure you there's nothing simple about it. If you don't trust me, please have a look around. Uh, excuse me, are, are you from a science and engineering background? Yeah. You look like you have a panic attack from nostalgia. I'm sorry for your loss, but yeah, right? So if you add, if you add a bit of direction to motion, it becomes movement. When you add a purpose to movement, it becomes transport. And when you aggregate over transport, it becomes logistics. And logistics is pervasive. Right from the time zone in each of your mobile phones, which was created so that you know, trains across long distances could run on time, or to the money in your bank because of stock markets, which was created so that you know, ships over long distances could have insurance. It's everywhere. As a matter of fact, let's just have a look at the logistics of you know, assembling for an event like this. Let's say on a lazy Sunday morning, there are five such events in the city, right? and say 10 cities and 100 cities, 10 cities in the country and 100 cities in the world, right? We're talking about just on a Sunday morning, right? Five events for a city, 10 cities a country, 100 cities an event, and an average of five kilometers per person that you made over here. We're talking about five million kilometers traveled just to attend events like this. Over a period of month, that's 150 million kilometers. That's three million kilometers more, by the way, between the distance of sun and earth, right? Now, wh why, why talk about this whole big picture? Wh wh why talk about this entire big picture, right? Like taking from assembling for an event to everything, right? Because there are certain problems which are inherently scalable, right? Like the Uber example we talked about, right? It's good for everybody that if there are more Uber riders, if there are more Uber drivers, right? It's a marketplace, it's good for everybody. In retail, you know, we have the fabled term, economies of scale. But motion is inherently unscalable. Let's do, let's do a little fun exercise, you know? Uh, although this is an exercise my parents always love to do, but I'm not giving them a chance. Let's say you have to distribute two wedding cards, right? And I have to just give it between two people, right? How many options do I have? Two. I can either give to you first or you first, followed by you and you, right? Let's say if I want to do it across three people, now I have some room to play. Maybe I can pick one, then which one on the next. So we're talking about six options. At five, we're talking about 120 options, right? Can you take a guess how many options would be at just 10? Like, you know, if you, had a you have to distribute wedding card to 10 people, how many options exist for that? Like, any guesses? So we started, like, at one, it, at, at one it was one, at two, it was two. At three, it was six. At five, it was 120. How, ma how many for 10? I can tell you, it's way more than the number of grains in this sand bowl, right? Or as a matter of fact, more than the sand on this entire earth. So that's the problem. Motion is inherently unscalable. Now that we have established the madness, and by the way, in this madness, as of 2017, you are a big part of it. You are the reason for this madness. Like 10 years back, the only thing I ever waited for in my life was my JE scorecard, which wasn't great, by the way, right? But today, all of you get packages. I, I like how you laughed at the not great JE scorecard. <laughs> Personal memories, yeah. So, uh, right? 
Today, you have packages coming from Amazon, eBay, everywhere to your homes, right? So the supply chain doesn't at the shop, it ends at your home. So now you are a part of this madness, right? So how do you solve this madness? As while introducing, you mentioned, you know, I'm an engineer, right? So uh, engineers, you know, took the first conventional approach that, you know, that we have previously done, you know, with Bluetooth. We put a Bluetooth on everything. We love things with Bluetooth, right? Like my hoverboard in the office has a Bluetooth in it. I have no idea why, right? So what we did was we took a GPS chip and we put it on everything. We put it on a bag, man, woman, van. And now what we had was just a lot more of knowledge about this chaos, right? It's like putting a baby monitor in a twin's room. They're just going to keep waking you up in the night. It's going to do next to nothing to actually make the twins sleep peacefully, right? So now what do you do, right? Because none of your conventional approach have worked to solve this. We cheated. How did we cheat? We cheated from mother nature. It turns out she's actually pretty good in mathematics, much, much like you know, most Indian parents, right? So what we did was we went about studying the motion of ants, right? Like how over, over a period of time, over a period of generation and over a period of geography, ants figure out the best way to reach their food and go back home, right? We studied how humans have evolved over the years, you know, how, how, we, how we have become, you know, better over the years, right? And, and, and that's an assumption. We'll not debate that for now, right? Uh, so how ants moved, how humans moved. As a matter of fact, we went about and studied, when you take a... You know, when you take a hot iron rod, how you make steel is, you know, to strong the steel, you take a hot iron rod and you quench it in cold water, right? And when you do that, apart from making that fabulous sound, what it does is it brings this brilliant crystal formation which optimizes the strength, right? We don't know why, but we know the how, right? So we started learning from nature. So to do this, we actually had to unlearn a lot of things. You know, we had to break every traditional mold. So we set about building the world's most sophisticated logistics system without a single logistics expert, not one. What we did was instead, we got a psychiatrist, we got a neurologist, we got a PhD in chemistry, we got a PhD in molecular biology, right? Like I went all the way to San Diego to convince that one guy to move back. We got PhDs from fields typically never associated with logistics, backed by some of the most exceptional minds in computational and engineering, right? And we went about building this thing. Yeah. And today, it has a huge social impact. And I'm not talking about, you know, just the greenery, you know, and the, because of the efficiency. That is there. But something which is very close to me is that tools like these cut out underemployment. What is underemployment? When you go to a mall, you know, there's a boom barrier for your parking, there's a guy standing over there pressing the button for your ticket, right? Why is he standing there? The most biggest problem is, in three years, he's gonna be replaced with a younger and a cheaper version. He has not learned any more skills, right? His kids will not go to college. People who use our tools at the very, at the, and you know, at the very bottom of your HR stack, right? They earn a lot more. They stay with their jobs longer. They progress to better jobs. Hopefully, their kids will go to college. And one day, one of those kids will stand there delivering a TED talk, right? Now, the hard thing about hard things is, you know, as Ben Horowitz said, that there's no pattern to it, right? There's like, you know, we did this till now, but it's definitely, you know, you can't just extend it, right? And very, very trivially extend it, right? So there's no pattern to doing hard things. So who are we? We are not just engineers. We are a bunch of explorers. We are travelers. We are adventurers. And now we are giving a shout out to musicians, athletes, artists to join us in creating the magic in motion. I mean, think of it, man. Like all of us, you know, as mankind, we put one of us on the moon 50 years back. Do we really deserve to be stuck at Sakinaka today? I mean, come on, right? Like, let's not fail as a race together. So I'm just going to wrap up the talk with you know, a few words that help my team and myself wake up every morning. Men are haunted by the vastness of eternity. And so we ask ourselves, 
Will our actions echo across the centuries? Will strangers hear our names long after we are gone and wonder who we were? How bravely we fought and how ferociously we loved. Thank you.